called her a mad woman when she left the convent school where she taught for 20 years and moved into the slums of Calcutta. She started by picking up one dying woman from the gutter. In the next 30 years, she helped tens of thousands of people the world had abandoned as hopeless. I now call upon Mother Teresa to receive the diploma and the gold medal. On December 10th, 1979, she was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize, an honor generally reserved for statesmen. Let us all together thank God for this beautiful occasion where we can all together proclaim the joy of spreading peace, the joy of loving one another and the joy acknowledging that the poorest of the poor are our brothers and sisters. In an age where most people feel powerless to affect poverty, prejudice and injustice, what has this woman done to bring hope to millions? How has this little Albanian nun crossed the political and religious barriers of a troubled Hindu-Muslim country? I'm Joyce Davidson. To find out why the Nobel Committee chose Mother Teresa's work with the poor as a model for world peace, we asked her if we could come to India to make a film. She agreed but asked before we talked on camera that I go to Calcutta to have a personal experience of her work. Hey, For a handful of days, I plunged into a world that was unlike anything I'd ever experienced before, the world of Mother Teresa. Shall we go? Yes, please. The world she has created is very much a part of the 20th century, but in some respects, light years removed. We're going to have lunch together, and 2.15 we'll pick up Mother again for the afternoon program, which is really all the centers. Born August 27, 1910, she made her way to India from her home in Yugoslavia by joining the Irish Sisters of Loreto. She was principal of the Loreto School in Calcutta when she left after 20 years to found her own order, the Missionaries of Charity, an order dedicated to help the poor of India and the world. Assisted by over 100,000 volunteers called co-workers, her missionaries of charity operate in 32 countries, including the United States. Mother Teresa manages this vast network as personally and as simply as when she began. No complicated office machinery, no Xeroxes nor Telexes, only one telephone. She communicates by handwritten letters sent by ordinary mail. She accepts no financial maintenance from either church or state. She believes that divine assistance will come as she needs it. Today, for example, she hitched a ride on the private plane of an industrialist to the city of Jamshapur, where she has a full schedule of tours, receptions, and speeches. I'm just asking about that. Where do you get your energy from? <laughs> Mother, as you like. We have mass and holy communion every morning. We begin with him and we end with him. And that's the most... Jamshapur is a big steel center located 150 miles west of Calcutta. Like all industrial cities, Jamshapur draws the homeless and the disadvantaged. 
The area has often called on Mother Teresa to help with its enormous social problems, in particular, leprosy. Her first stop in Jamshapur was to check out the value of new land donated to her leprosy center on the outskirts of the city. No, let them stay here. You see, is it possible to get more land this side since then? This is what would be another possibility. No need to break up no, this. No, nothing. This is the only thing. We, is only we have to get land for them to work on. Can't they? Another thing is whether you want one big thing or some smaller ones which are easier to handle and which they can handle by themselves. Yeah. This is the only. They are filling up their mother. This is they are filling up the refuse disco, of the town. Discos, uh, discos, refuse. slag, slag. But water. will they be able to grow anything on that? Not immediately. Not ah, immediately. Yeah. But after some time. After some time. But see, but this is all. This is all filled up things. So little by little, there. Uh, yeah, Bishop will have to think of that could, only because uh, that's the they have having that Clearly, the new gift did not suit her vision for the leprosy patients here. See, like we are doing in Shantinagar and other Bhubaneshwar and all these places, we buy the material, give it to them, they build their, build their own house. And we have everything, school, dispenser, and yes, all of this. To find out what it is that Mother Teresa does for leprosy patients that is so effective, I went to Titagar, a suburb of Calcutta, where one of her earliest centers was built. It is here that I saw, for the first time, one of the most dread diseases known to mankind, leprosy. Leprosy victims are the ultimate outcasts and the most universally feared. This hospital has no doctors. It's run by seven missionaries of Charity Brothers. Brother Christos, the director, is a trained paramedic. Why are people, particularly people in the West, so terrified of leprosy? I think there is a lot of ignorance prevailing in the whole field of leprosy. It was true in the past, about 100 years ago, People did not know anything about the cause of the disease. Uh, there was no proper medicines available, and uh, curability was not possible. But now, you see, in, 19, in 1873, Dr. Hansen discovered the cause of the disease, Mycobacterium leprae. And then later on, the, the medicine has been discovered, effective medicines, and leprosy is, in fact, 100% curable. And, uh, if you get it early enough? If we, get, if we can get the disease in the early, early stage itself. What is it really? See, the cause of the disease is very much similar to the TB germ. And then, the TB germs mainly attack the lungs. But leprosy attacks mainly the superficial nerves. You suppose it's a glass with, filled with hot milk or boiling water, then the patient will not be able to, will be able to go on holding it for half an hour until it becomes cold, even if it is a boiling aluminium glass. Then they got burned it. And these are all scars, scars of the burns. And then it becomes, you see, are there, different, are there different kinds of leprosy? There are two different kinds of leprosy. One is infectious and the other one is non-infectious. He suffered from a, an infectious type of leprosy. His is? Yes. Yes. And are you not afraid of catching it? No, I'm not afraid of catching it because even if you're involved in the leprosy field, it's very, it is very difficult to get leprosy even if you want to get leprosy. See? He looks, oh. he looks he, whipped. We are not making her feel like no, he, no, no. an object at this No, moment. I don't think so. Eh? Because he doesn't. No. Eh? Yeah. Oh, that's right. <laughs> you know, he will not feel it because... No, I don't want to. No, no, dignity. no, that's not. I'm trying to... It's gradually getting better and better. And uh, this will be healed in a, in a week time, the whole wound. We have bandaged it. And then... Uh, 
Well, we'll try to give him a job or something to hold him. Yes. I want to. Yeah. And then it. Brother Christos told me that the key to the success of Mother Teresa's work is teaching the patients job skills. So we have started some kind of a, a rehabilitation activities, for example, handloom units and uh, cobbler section, carpentry, there is a piggery, and the whole of building structures you'll find are made by patients themselves. We don't have a, we didn't have an engineer, we didn't have contractors all my patients themselves. It shows the, the capability of these patients. I mean, the talents of them, unutilized. And uh, a chance once given to them, they can show that they can be like you and be normal because again. They can be useful, right. useful to their fellow man. Very true. Will and he now, be cured? Yeah, he'll be completely cured, eh? And now... Does that not hurt him? No, no. No. Only I mean, there will be a little, little, little burning sensation, the patient will have it. But uh, this will be totally healed. It was much worse. Yeah. I suppose that the mm. hand on his head is as important as the medicine. Compassion and love, they all will have to be mixed up with the medicine. And then only the medicine can be effective in leprosy. If no love, leprosy work has no, no meaning. I mean, what matters is love. I mean, without love, nothing can be done. And that's precisely this love, this self-giving love, this Christian love, what she practices and what she preaches, is touched me also. Thank you. Mother Teresa had a message for the leprosy victims of Jamshapur in their native Bengali. I thank God very much that we are all here today and together. We want and we pray that this place be like the other leprosy centers we have for our brothers and sisters. In Titagar, as many as 500 lepers are working, weaving, doing a lot of things. Why? Because there is new hope and new love in their hearts today. There will be for you too a place where you will be able to live in peace, happiness, joy, and where you will be able to work with your hearts, with your efforts. Disease is no sin. Disease is something God gives. And for the number of days that you have in your hands, you must use your efforts. Some of you may not have an arm. Some of you may not have a foot. Some of you may not have an eye. But you must get together and be at peace with each other and love each other. I wish I had a place for all of you, for everyone where you will be able to work with your own hands, with your own efforts, and you will stay in peace and there will be within your souls no fears. You will not fear anyone's words. You will not have to fear what people have to say as long as you work with your own hands. It does not matter whether we are Hindus or Muslims or Christians. We all pray to God together, as a family. I love you. When I ask the sisters, they all want to work with you. And you must take your medicine. If you don't take your medicine, it is very bad. Waiting for Mother Teresa at the next stop were the affluent of the city. Here in Jamshadpur, there are thousands of lepers, there are thousands of sick and dying, there are thousands of people that we never even think of them. Have we done something? Do we know them? So hunger is not only for a piece of bread, hunger is for love. 
a desire, a longing to be loved. And the lonely people suffer terrible hunger. And nakedness is not only for a piece of cloth. Nakedness is that loss of human dignity, the respect that you and I long to have. They also long to have. That man lying in the street, eaten up by worms, it is the child of God. But has lost that human dignity, you and I have taken it from him. We, we have passed by him, we have not seen. Maybe we have looked but not seen, or we have seen and not looked. And so, it is not how much we do for God, it is how much love we put in the doing. It is not how much we give, but how much love we put in the giving. And love to be true has to hurt. I'll just give you one very small example. Some time ago, a little child heard the Mother Teresa has no sugar. He went home, he told his parents, I will not eat sugar for three days. I will give my sugar to Mother Teresa. That child loved with great love. That child taught me a very big lesson, that if you really want to love God, we must give until it hurts. We need to understand how to love and whom to love. It's easy to love the people that are giving me in return. But it's very difficult to love people who have maybe, we think that they have nothing to give, but they give us much more. And I can tell you from experience, I have received much more from the poor I have served these 30 years than I have given to them. And so if you want to experience the joy of loving, the joy of loving God, love Him in the poor. Begin first in your own family. Love your own family first. So many institutions today are full of old people. My son, my daughter, God knows where they are in better or so on, and they have no time. Yeah. Do we have them? Do we know them? Do we know their need? Do we ever write to them? Do we think of them? Do we ever smile at them? These are little things, but let us do them with great love. And then you will be able. You have practice in your own home. You will be able to. Your eyes will see that man, they, who we see, who I see. The other day, the sisters picked up a man from the streets of Bombay. His skin actually was pasted on the road. How? Thousands of people must have passed there. And we don't. My brother, my sister, because the same loving hand of God has created that man that created me, created you, created all of us. Once when I picked up a man from the street, from the open drain, and brought him home, what did he say? I've lived like an animal in the street, but I'm going to die like an angel, loved and cared. And he died a beautiful death. Everybody, come to me. Mother Teresa's devotion to the people of India embraces all social classes. Here she met with the working people of the city. And she received the gift of a home from a retired Englishman, Mr. Jones. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful gift. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. I always want to do something. Beautiful. You have done something beautiful for God. Thank God, eh? Thank God. My day is faithful forever. He is just to the poor and the outdated. Yes, sir. Sister Marcy, I think this would be ideal for a shishu baba. Yes, yes, yes. How far is it from our place? One minute. Mother Teresa never solicits money or gifts, but accepts whatever is offered in the name of the poor. Mr. Jones' house will be converted into an orphanage, and she used the occasion to voice one of her most passionate and controversial themes. And what Mr. Jones has done today, he is proving that God loves all those little children, all those little children that have maybe have nothing to eat, maybe they have no home, maybe they are sick, maybe they are crippled. 
the sick and the suffering and the unwanted and the unloved will be able to receive love and care. So all of you, when you hear something like that, that somebody wants to have an abortion, wants to destroy the child, tell that person, Mother Teresa has a beautiful home right here in Jamshadpur. You go there and she wants your little one. She wants your little child and you go there. Like we have done in Calcutta, they have sent word to all the clinics, to all the hospitals, to all the police stations. Please don't destroy the child, we will take the child. And God has blessed us, so oh, many, so many Indian families. You would be surprised to know how many of our Indian families have no children. And we give the children. So we are fighting abortion by adoption. And so we are bringing joy into the lives of people who have no children. And we are bringing joy into the child's life who has no parents, who is wanted by no one. This work is all our work. It is not only for the missionaries of charity. It is our work together. You must come and share. Maybe just to play a little. Maybe just to feed the child. Maybe just to smile at the child. But that's all. You come and share your love. Mr. John has given us an opportunity to love God. An opportunity to love one another as Christ, as God himself, has loved each one of us. When Mother Teresa first came to India in 1929, Calcutta was the political, social, and cultural capital under British rule a city of great wealth and abject poverty. In 1947, India became independent. With partition and the great Hindu-Muslim conflict that followed, hundreds of thousands of refugees ended up on the already crowded streets of Calcutta. It was in 1948 that Mother Teresa left the security of the Loreto convent and moved into the slums. She had a vision. She would not attempt to help the masses of people or solve problems that caused poverty. Accepting conditions as she found them, she would work with individuals, one person at a time. She simply went to wherever there was a need, began feeding the hungry, caring for the sick and dying. It did not matter what caste, what religion. She rescued children who had been abandoned, orphaned, left on garbage heaps to die. This is the first orphanage she opened for children in Calcutta. I? Yes, you are alive still. Hey? It's called Shishu Bhavan, or children's home. And it's a place where infants up to the age of five can receive shelter, food, and love until the sisters can find them new homes through adoption. Now, you are interested in adopting Kirtana. Kirtana. Hopeful parents-to-be undergo a screening process. All the documents of Kirtana and send them to us. We will apply in the court. Okay. After obtaining passport, visa, or you can come and take her. Thank you. Thank you very much. I understand. Yeah. Yes, yes. Every year, thousands of children are adopted from this and other places like it by people who come from all over the world. Yes. Yes. A kirtana in English singing song. In Italian musica. In Italian, uh, change name Emanuel. Oh, wonderful. Manuela wonderful. name is name Israel in Italian translation English. God with us. Emanuel. Yes. God with us. Wonderful name. Not all the children are adopted, but Mother Teresa continues to take care of them. 
Boys of school age in Calcutta go to a place she calls Boys Town. How are these children here coming here? See, they know the sisters, they know the men. No, no. They've got a balance, you see? <laughs> they know what is mother's love. Yeah, mother's love, You yeah. see, when they grow without that, it's very, very difficult, difficult suddenly to give them mother's love. Yeah. Very good. The red very good, sorry. grown big, no? These are all small babies, they were grown up. They were the first group to come here. Acha, grown so tall. Eh? What are you eating? What are you doing? I finished my house school, I do radio on my Is that government place? Yeah. Have you been admitted? No. Not yet? Why? I have to give my compact exam in mathematics. Come on. Oh. But you cannot apply and secure the place. Yes, what? Can you to secure the place in time? June they take, no? Get me the name of that person. You have all grown so big, I can't recognize most of you. But I'm very happy to see you grow. But I hope all of you together, the big and the small, are going to really make this home, this boys' town, a real home of love, of peace and joy. There is a very beautiful picture of a boys' town when I went to United States. They gave me a statue which I'm going to give to you. And there is a little boy like you holding the other boy, carrying the other boy, and he says, he is not so heavy, he's my brother. And I hope you will learn that. My brother is not so heavy. And I will send that to you, I'll give it to Father. And you will look at it and you will remember that you are in the boys' town to do that. To love one another. And to remember my brother is not so heavy. Always be ready to share, always be ready to give. Always be ready to love. Who is your brother? Smaller. Next one. Edwin. Who is the brother of Edwin? My. Yeah, there is. And everybody must say, my brother, my brother, my brother. Because God himself has made us all together, all children of God. That's why my brother. And sometimes say my sister also. Don't say only my brother, all right? <laughs> all right. This is the Kaligat section of Calcutta. There is a temple here named after Kali, the Hindu goddess of death and destruction. Hindus from all over India make pilgrimages to this temple. The destitute come here to beg and to die. In 1952, the city of Calcutta gave Mother Teresa what was at one time a Hindu pilgrim's rest house. She renamed it Nirmal Fridai, Pure Heart, and used it for the destitute and the dying. This was the most difficult of all Mother Teresa's houses to confront. Many of the patients were a few hours from death they were receiving, perhaps for the first time in their lives, the kind of human care that gave them a sense of dignity and self-worth. The missionaries of charity are not in the business of converting. Hindus, Muslims, Buddhists are all cared for here. The patients practice their own religions and are buried in accordance with their customs. Mother Teresa does not encourage Westerners to come to India to help her. If they show up and have the necessary skills, she sends them to the house of the dying. We talked to one such volunteer, Dr. R.C. Smith, a British co-worker. I had to retire from general practice uh, early because of a couple of heart attacks and uh, I reckoned I'd had enough warning for any man. And I really wasn't very well uh, and I was it was suggested I should come out here and, and work for Mother Teresa. I've been interested in terminal care. Uh, and I did really rather reluctantly, to be, to be truthful, uh, because I didn't think my health would stand it. And I came out for three weeks, and the 
the three weeks extended to six, and I got better and better and better as, as time went on. This was last autumn, and I just haven't looked back since. So that, uh, you know, it just took me right out of myself. We asked the doctor about the patient next to him. Well, I hope he doesn't understand English, but it, it, it's very, very poor. He's 25 now. If he's alive in five years, he'll be lucky. TB. TB. And starvation. I mean, you, you know, the two things go together. They're the diseases of poverty. A lot of them are just so ill that they, they just exist from, from day to day. But when they, they do start to pick up, then you can begin to reach the person. Uh, and, uh, you know, then they'll smile and they're happier than they were. And, of course, when Mother comes round, it's, it's, it's marvellous because everybody lights up. Uh, she has that gift. And she sees Christ in every person that she treats. Uh, and she inspires that same belief in, in those who work for her. And so you forget yourself because she submerges herself. So she has this enormous power to spread love and affection and caring wherever she goes. I mean, she will... I have no doubt that she will be a saint as soon as it's, it's possible to become a saint. I don't know very much about the technique, but it's, uh, uh, once she's dead, she'll be a saint. The headquarters of Mother Teresa's order is located in one of the busiest sections of Calcutta. It's called the Mother House. Novices study and train here to do work with the poor. When they take their final vows, not all will work in India. Many of these young sisters will find themselves in major cities of the West, working with alcoholics, elderly shut-ins, drug addicts, battered women, and what Mother Teresa believes is the biggest illness in the West, loneliness. Any anger, any dislike toward another person... One of their counselors is Father Bill, a North American priest who came to India five years ago to work with leprosy patients. And if there is anything in your own lives, people that you're working with, people that you're living with, where there is a negative thought, where there's little anger, someone has abused you, someone has taken advantage of you, someone has lied to you, it's very easy to have a hostile feeling toward that individual. A person cannot grow in love, a person cannot grow in peace, and a person cannot grow in joy as long as that hostility or that anger or that negative thought is within you. It has to be settled now. It has to be forgiven now. You have to release it now. And what takes place? Well, it's a gradual transformation in your own life, discipline. And that's when you can start living in peace. That's when you can really start having joy. To bring this richness to the poor to bring this richness... I wanted to talk to Father Bill about his experience. Father Bill, you have called Mother Teresa a benevolent dictator, and you should know. Yes, uh, I use those words in a very uh, good way. Mother Teresa is a very competent person, and she abandons herself completely to God. And I guess she just follows her inspirations. And when she has an inspiration to do something, to start something, she does it, and she informs the others. You know, this is the way it's going to be done, I guess. So this is what we're going to do. This is where we're going to open. This is where you're going to go. But uh, I think I'm seeing something more than a benevolent dictator. Uh, I'm seeing, if I could use another word, uh, a benevolent coach now. <laughs> uh, she is coaching the sisters on. She is coaching the world on. You know, she's not dictating, but she sort of in, is inspiring, just as the coach is there behind his team, you know, pushing them on. She can speak to 50,000 people, or five people, or one, and there's something happens. They're inspired. Now it was time to meet the coach. Uh, very nice to meet you. I'm fine. I've been waiting for you. I didn't expect you to be so little. I expected you to be 10 feet tall. 
Mother Teresa was making plans to visit a small village where she donated part of her Nobel Prize money, and she asked me to accompany her. Then she received word that there was a problem. His father has written that the bridge has been broken. Uh, and so he said that if we come by ambulance... Can we go around? Uh, uh, no, if we come by ambulance, they will... Uh, the, the authorities will allow, will allow us to cross. Ambulance. We go with sister and show the man the, the big bus, bus. Oh, and ask him if that will be allowed to cross. Because if that is allowed, otherwise we would have to bring the ambulance also and the car and then uh, just use the ambulance to cross. With these uncertainties, we set out the next day for the jungle, where the landless people have little to eat and some no place to live. It was a three-hour ride in oppressive heat on bumpy roads. But this is very narrow all along. Mm -hmm. Very bad road. In the vicinity of the damaged bridge, the authorities had stopped all heavy traffic. Other buses had been blocked all morning, their passengers waiting in the sun. But Mother Teresa is no stranger to trouble. She convinced the authorities that the broken bridge would support foot traffic and that our empty bus could cross safely. Here and then we'll get into the car. You're very good at directing traffic. Oh, very good. <laughs> <laughs> It would be another hour after crossing the bridge before we arrived at the village where she donated her first Nobel Prize money to build houses. Hundreds of people were waiting to greet Mother Teresa. Some had walked 20 to 30 miles from neighboring villages to pay homage. In India, there is a belief that the very sight of a holy person brings a blessing. In the presence of such a person, Hindus will prostrate themselves and try to touch their feet. The custom is called darshan. Mother Teresa reciprocated by touching as many of the people as she could. Even in the poorest of villages, guests are always welcomed with gifts of food. <laughs> Father Gabrich is the local priest, a native of Yugoslavia who has worked in India most of his life. They took this opportunity to converse in their native language. Father Gabrich has been a friend of Mother Teresa's for 50 years. Father Gabrich, when you first knew Mother Teresa as a very young woman, did you see the potential for what she was going to be? No, surely not. We, that, that was a mystery and a, a revelation to all of us. But once she started, eh, then you know, you connect. Eh? Oh, that's exactly. Of course. Yes, I see, that's, have you see, known. Yeah, you see, that was the way, you know, she was doing. She was teaching the girls that spirit of abnegation. Eh? and no question of fooling about religious life and everything. Uh, then you realize, ah, you see how God was preparing her already. At least those few years I knew her in, uh, in Antalya, and especially that courage in the beginning, as you know, she was ostracized practically even by religious people. Eh? When they, she went out in the streets yeah, alone, they wouldn't like wish her. rupees. Yeah, they wouldn't wish her even good morning. It went so well because many thought that she was half cracked. Eh? And very often, when the first house she lived in Creek Lane on the third floor up there, I used to go to say mass. Eh? Yeah, I used to say mass over there. Eh? But there were only a few, and the way they live, and people talking all kind of, oh, what is this and that. Eh? There I realized, but that's usually the same thing. 
Saint is not only who makes miracles, but saint who can stand all this, you know, in that this uh, problem uh, with a smile. And she did it. And she was never afraid? No. Yeah. She was absolutely sure God was with her, and that's, that's I, I think that's everybody of us, uh, we need in our life. I, I think of it, why should we be afraid? Is there any reason to be afraid? I didn't talk so. It doesn't help you to be afraid. You get headache over it. What do you think a saint is? Really, uh, to be a saint, it's so simple. And it's so also difficult, because simplicity is very difficult. Eh? That's we are so artificial nowadays. We complicate our life and our, you know, relation to God and to man. To be saint is to be simple to God, simple to ourselves also. Eh? I tell the people day and night. Suppose there was no night. The day would be, uh, you know, really too still and too common. Eh? But there is a night. That's why the day is so morning is so beautiful after the night. Eh? Same thing in our life. Eh? Last year on Easter, I had three masses, evening meal, before I there was no time to eat. And they brought me, there was a bit of rice and one egg. That was all very poor people, that was one egg. And there were three small kiddies of the village, of the house, they sat around me. And they were looking at that egg, you know, eh? And looking at this side and looking that side. So what I did, I took the egg and made it in four pieces, you see. And each one of us had a bit of it. And believe I have, I had a good meal. We talked about the Nobel Peace Prize and Mother Teresa's gift to the people. So when Mother uh, mentioned I was listening at the radio, when it was t she was getting that prize in Oslo, and Mother has really took it out of my heart. He says, the people ask her, Mother, what are you going to do with this? I says, I'm going to build the houses for the poor. <gasps> I did. <laughs> I, honestly, I was listening here because I knew that it was time. It was such a perfect transmission that day. Eh? And she gave me immediately this 50,000, and we have bought bamboo straw. It is going full speed eh? in about a week, two weeks time. Everything will be finished, all these houses. So they don't have to live in mud houses? Oh, yeah. Mud houses there will be, that we keep. That is their life. That's nothing wrong in that. But very often there is not even a house. I mean, it's something that you cannot imagine that a man can live there. So at least a decent man, that a family, they have certain respect, you see, that as a human being they live. Bacara keo bitre jabena, onu rotkori. Keo bitre jabena, madero mamra uta gori, you see, that, just to see. Keo bitre jabena, the sister of me. Hey, ke ace barite. Hey, hey. Uh -huh, Joel got a Very good. Uh -huh, just, you see, that's a small house. Michael, they, they want it. You see? Uh, <laughs> I came to see your houses. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Huh? Those is, that you bought this is the Nobel the gift, Peace Prize. Nobel Prize houses. Yes. Now, you see, there is a mat. There is a mat. Eh? No furniture. Wall uh, the mud. Eh? And they, every day with cow dung, you see, they polish it nicely, wash it. Eh? Ooh, These are small houses, and you can see it. Eh? No, this is all veranda, eh? Mm. My cocoa, yes, How sorry. much does it cost, this? A, a big house like this, fully, mm. it will cost more than, five, uh, close to uh, 2,000 rupees. 2,000? Bamboos, mm. mother. So. Bamboos is expensive. Formerly, mm. bamboos used to be cheap, mm. eh? Cement, uh, mother, they ask you 53 rupees now. No, 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 nothing, that's why I'm waiting. You saw it, you saw it, Mokido, no? Yeah. We'll just see it now. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't put... 2,000 rupees per house is equivalent to $250. Mother Teresa asked Father Gabbridge to build more houses for less money. She was concerned that these new homes would create envy and friction in the village. Having experienced Mother Teresa's work with the lepers, the orphans, the sick and the homeless, I returned to Calcutta for an interview with this remarkable woman. We come to you all over the world to see newspapers and magazines and books. What do you think we are seeking? That is it. I suppose you are seeking to, to prove the reality of God's love. That the God still loves the world so much. I think we also want to find something in you and in the brothers and the sisters. Um, but maybe the in the Western love. world we do not find it. No, I don't think so. What I think what you are looking for, this, 
that the, that the lady does really God love the world in real because the work is nothing but our love for God in action. And you see people coming to you to take from you for their own ends because you are no, you cannot see them. Mm. No. What did you come for? What, what is your aim? What is my What is your aim in coming? For? My aim. Um, I really wanted to see for myself, to open up, because I was closed. And, you know, closed. Yes. To open up and to feel the sisters and the brothers and to see for myself. No, but to open up just like that. So there must be the opening for some other reason. Opening up, by opening yourself, you want to, to share something with the other. Because everybody cannot come from America. And neither the means do they have, neither the way, nor the other time to do what you have come to do. So your aim is to receive something sure, for sure, something real. Then go back to your country and give it to the people, share with the people. Absolutely. So. But you see, there is the personal feeling also. Oh, you are enriched by coming. Yes. To, uh, you are very much enriched. You have received much more than you have given. I believe that. So you have given your time. Maybe you have given your money, but I think you have, uh, you have been enriched uh, with something mysterious, in which there's no explanation. But I think uh, American people and European people, they have much, and very often that muchness, if there is a word of muchness, eh? that muchness is suffocating, and they are longing to be free to face this, what you are facing today. Yes, there is. And that is why what you have received, you must be generous and giving it with your own heart and soul. Don't hold it. But you know, I have been walking through Calcutta and your houses of love, yeah. and I've been saying, why must I suffer so? Why not me? Why not you? Because you are unworthy. I am unworthy. Unworthy yes. of suffering so Yes. Would you explain? God knows what would happen, because you and I will not be able to bear like that. Now, how do you... We are two. I'm sure. Um, I so God knows better. That's why he doesn't give us. Because he gives us something and immediately, immediately we try to get rid of it. Try to make our lives better. Yes. Then we make up. Something is missing, we make up with something else. But they have nothing else. Yeah, that is the content. It's difficult to explain. Very difficult. But then, and I think what is with our people, they're very close to God. They have a pure heart. When I was growing up, we used to see motion pictures or lectures on starving children in India. And there was always a feeling of poor little things, but totally Never separate. Did. I was separate, yeah. and I think that the whole society was separate looking at them. Yeah. Look at that dear little yeah. face. It didn't affect them. No, but ne they never How thought of giving, of sharing. Oh, you gave your allowance. No, like that. Yes. Uh, up from the abundance, but they never gave until it hurt. That's why there was no connection. Why does it have to hurt? You said it's yeah. hurt. It has to hurt. Love to be true has to hurt. You think married love has to hurt? Yes, you? it has to hurt. That giving of self to each other, it's a hurt. It's a hurt. And then childbirth is a hurt. Yes. And you have to work for it, your anxiety and all that's hurting. How the child go, the child gets sick? It's hurting. Same thing for us. It's hurting us to see our people die like that. To see them. This morning I saw the man sitting in front of our gate waiting to die at So we have to send for the ambulance to take. But it's hurt. It's when you see somebody suffer like that, it hurts. Then you want to do immediately something. And if you take the trouble to phone, to do this, to that, that concern is hurting you because you have to give up something else to be able to do that. Unless you do that sharing, then you can't do anything. In all the things that I've read about you, you've said that your past the beginnings, all of that, are unimportant. No, not important. Why not? Because it's very important for you to 
You can know me. One person to know it's easy, but very difficult for you people to know the poor. You don't know the poor. And I want you to know the poor. They are the important. I think the greatest injustice that we have done to them is that we have, de we have deprived them of their human dignity. And we think of them as good for nothing, as lazy, as thieves, and all. And that's not true. And we humiliate them. And we humiliate them. Because by ex taking away their dignity and, and respect, uh, we have just, we deal with them as if they were animals. Have you ever If I am only Mother Teresa, I wouldn't get that Nobel Prize. But because I'm working for the, because I'm given to the poor, that's why. And that is why it's a real proof that is given to the poor. Anybody with a little bit of common sense will come to that knowledge. Have, have you ever thought about how many children you have oh, I don't out know. in the world? I don't know. I couldn't tell you. But there is a joke here, they say, Mother Teresa the whole time is talking about, about abortion, about the natural family planning. But she herself is not practicing. Every day she has more and more children. <laughs> <laughs> Something is either very right or very wrong. Very right. Very right. <laughs> Tishu Bhavan, you have uh, some unwed mothers yes, that still the remain there and yes. work as volunteers. No, we keep them for as long as the baby is healthy enough. And then we rehabilitate them. We don't keep them for no, long. Rehabilitate Unless means what? We Either we try to get them married, that person, if it is possible, or make the peace between the parents and them, or so on, or send them back. Many, most of them go back, as we did in Bangladesh. If you find that a husband time. for them, do you give yes, them the dowry? Yes, we give them in marriage, yes. Dowry we don't give, but we give them all that they need, their golden ring and chain and earrings and, and all the things that they need in the married life, bedding and all, as the mother would give. So most of our children, now that are getting married, and now we have bought a plot of land and begin them to build their own houses so that they can settle for life. Very beautiful. You said the greatest poverty is right in our homes. Yes. And but I see the loneliness in the family. See the now, if you go to a family, so many of the so many institutions are filled with old people. Before they used to stay in the family, now they are put in the institution. The ch mother and father are working. Child comes back from school, no one to receive the child. Child goes back to the street, takes drugs. This is the whole circle. And if we have difficulties to deal with the young people, it's the cause of the home. And if we have this disturbance in the world today, it's due to the family life. We have so many broken homes for that reason. Yes. Yes, because there's no one to help the child to be loved. But you and the brothers and sisters are really not like anybody else. You must... They're sinners, of course. That's why we need confession. Very much so. And that's the, that's the great mercy of God, that in spite of our sinfulness and our sins, He still trusts us, He still loves us. He still claims us as His own. That's the beauty of God's mercy. I cannot believe that you have ever seen it. Oh, very much too. My goodness. <laughs> I, mean, I know I have. I, I know also. You do? Of course. <laughs> but that's the greatness of God's love, that in spite of that, He still loves. He loves tenderly. He has a sense of humor about yes, us. Yes, I think so. Yeah, little Flower said that even if my, if my sins were scarlet red, I was still trusting in him. Three months after Mother Teresa received the Nobel Peace Prize, Prime Minister Indira Gandhi arrived at the Presidential Palace in New Delhi to witness another honor for Mother Teresa. When she began her life's work with the poor 32 years ago, Mother Teresa became an Indian citizen. Today, she will be the first European-born recipient of the country's highest honor, the Bharat Ratna, the Jewel of India.
Mother Mary Teresa Wayajoyu. What is the explanation for Mother Teresa's remarkable achievements? Perhaps it is her universal compassion, her ability to empathize with anyone, to love each unconditionally. The unique strength of this love is that it never discriminates, it is never judgmental, and it asks nothing in return. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. It is a revolutionary kind of love that she advocates. She is challenging the values by which most of us live. But to see the power of that love emanating from this small woman and those who work with her suggests that some of the answers to the problems of human existence may well be found in the world of Mother Teresa. Maybe you begin to know first the poor of your own family. A next door neighbor, do you know who is next door neighbor? And then pass on. From your neighbor, pass on in the street you live. Photo, one, two, three, four. Thank you, Mother. They have all grown so big, eh? Mother, chinta parchana to me. Kya to boro hai chho, ha? And now, before the commencement of the first meet, our mayor, for the history, will speak a few words. S moje strane majko znate nikakvi kraj, ne mogu, ja ću reći sestri, da se ono ništa o tom ne misli, majko ako sam za koga molio toliko. Aća, very good gentlemen, very good. Aća, ken kampani, kata ken kampani. Aha, such a small thing. Aća, ken kampani. 